Welcome back to Why in the Morning. My name is Jeremy Chache. You are watching the Y254 channel, the one and only best youth channel, the whole of Nairobi town. Karibu Nisana, and this is particularly the health segment, which we call Health on Monday. And right now, we want to welcome a young man by the name of Caleb Mwiregi, who is a lifestyle and fitness coach. And actually, lifestyle also includes things like wellness, and we'll discuss a little bit about wellness when we get there, and a little bit of nutrition as well. And so the reason why I've dis uh, we've chosen to discuss this particular topic is because in the past month, we've had three prominent deaths uh, with three uh, very famous people within the country who've died from cancer. And uh, actually, you know, these are people who have been documented. What about the deaths which have not been documented? What about the people who've died from cancer and it's not been documented? Or other illnesses and it's not been documented? And so what we want to do today is to kind of reach out and to talk about how to prevent certain diseases and how to keep ourselves healthy and how to live our best lives possible through wellness and through fitness and through nutrition. And right now, Karibu Nisana, meet my friend Khaled Urigi. Hello guys, I'm Caleb Merigi. Mm -hmm. I'm 24 years old. Uh, so what I do, I do fitness and lifestyle. I'm over a fitness and lifestyle coach. I deal with, I help people embrace the fitness lifestyle in everything, uh, in their lives, the diet beat and the physical activity. Because a lot of people are, are slacking off in physical activity. Uh, I don't know it's because of ignorance or laziness or, or something, but that's what I majorly do to put it out there in the limelight for all of us to, at least to be able to to get <coughs> everything of what it entails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Kari Busana. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've got the right man on stage with us today. Mm -hmm. Cindy. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and before we start, uh -huh. can you please tell us a little bit about um, how long you've been practicing lifestyle and mm -hmm. wellness and nutrition, and then also tell us about where you've been doing this. Okay, so fitness and nutrition. First, I studied it in school for four years in Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. I did something Bachelor of Science in Sports Science, mm -hmm. and there it, it's, it's broad, it, it's, all, it's all about physical activity, it's all about nutrition, and just how the human body works. Okay. And so I, I've been practicing it for not so long, let's say an year, and I've been able to learn a lot, especially the diet bit. Mm -hmm. And I can say uh, it's really encouraging that to see because a lot of young people now are are, are going to that direction. Mm -hmm. You you can see now in Kenya, uh, like in the Western world, uh, it's really em embracing the fitness mm -hmm. aspect of, of it. Yeah. Like you can find, there's this gym called the Easy Gym. The Easy Gym? Yeah, Easy Gym. It's in TRM. It's in a lot of places. Okay. It has come up. Oh, is it like, uh, like a gym yeah, franchise? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So like, I think fitness in Kenya has been embraced more compared to, let's say, five, ten years back, and that's a very good thing. And that's why people in the past didn't know something about sports science existed. I, I can tell folks I'm doing sports science, and they're like, uh, what? what's that exactly? Yeah, so I think uh, fitness now has been embraced more. And yeah, so basically, I just do fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've done it for one year. Yes. You've done it for something like a year. Yeah, something All like right. a year. All right, Karibu Sana. Thank you. And before we go any further, you guys, I'd like you guys to know if you've got any questions. I did post one up there. And how important is fitness to you? How important is nutrition to you? And what can we do to reduce diseases like cancer or any other diseases which may be less or which may be minor to that? And the way you can do that is hashtag why in the morning, hashtag help on Monday at joy underscore muchache at Y254 channel. And you can do that on Twitter and Instagram and also on Facebook. Karibu Nisana, once again, let's continue with this discussion. Okay. So, Kayla, when we're talking about nutrition, um, like I mentioned before, uh -huh. we've lost people yes, um, true. like Bob Collymore, uh -huh. Ken Koth, and it's also Joyce Laboso, and it's um, all due to cancer. Yeah. And I know right now we can't focus on only cancer because people are dying from other things as well. But these are the documented cases. But the people who've been dying from cancer as well, and they've not been taken to the newspaper, their stories have not made it to the news. 
And what we're talking about such a big disease like this, I know it can be hard, you know, um, to say that, oh, by the way, this is what you can eat to prevent cancer, or this is the exercise you can do to prevent cancer. I know we can't give exact measures, but maybe when it comes from an, as, an aspect of nutrition, uh -huh. what are some of the foods that we can eat, especially when we're starting to detox our bodies, that now we want to take care of ourselves? The first step is to detox ourselves, yeah, right? True. What can we do when it comes to detoxing our body? So, and please kindly start uh -huh. by defining detox. Okay, so de Okay, so as you've said, detox, uh, it majorly is removing the toxic out of the system. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, so basically there are some types of food which does that because it actually helps improve the Im Im immunity and stabilize the metabolism of the human body. Mm -hmm. And so some, some foods you can take is things like, so the, there's beetroot, beetroot re really helps the blood especially and there's lemon there's avocado there's banana yes yeah, yeah, so lemons and it's avocado majorly about the vegetables okay. and a lot of water okay. yeah because it helps reduce the toxicity of your body right. yeah so basically it's more vegetables and water yeah and fruits you should take a lot of fruits yeah we try we try to, to minimize a lot of solid food because what is solid when you try to so, so, so solid food, okay, when you're detoxing, you're being advised not to take much of, let's say, just normal food like rice or garlic and stuff. Just mm. take something light that will help your body to stabilize fast well. You get it, to get rid of the waste. Because during digestion, let's say you've taken, let, let's say rice or, or garlic, definitely they contain a lot of, like it will take time for them to be digest, di, di, digested and stuff and, and so when you do detox the system must be fully functional and so to enable it to at least to first detox it takes like two days to detox your whole system really and then now from there at least you can now start on the diet the loss of diets and stuff okay yeah exactly. it only takes about two days two to days detox for your, your body. system to, at least to be clean and then off from there, you can now use diets. Okay. So you start small, you don't go, at least, you start with something light as you go further like, like that. Yeah. Right. So, as, mm -hmm. yeah, please go. so if you're trying to lose weight or even gain weight, because yeah. for some people they try to gain weight, and by gain weight I say it's more of lean mass, not fats and stuff. So if you try to, to do that, if, after you detox, it will be very helpful because your system is not clean, you know? Yeah. And now it will be fully functional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it, it will respond very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, wow, that's very interesting. I'm, uh -huh. I'm glad that, you know, it's interesting to know it only takes about two days to detox your whole system. Uh -huh. And so, and, and you've said that it takes vegetables and fruits to do that. Yeah. What happens after we detox our body when it comes to now taking the next step into uh -huh. taking care of our lifestyles and our wellness? What's the next step after detoxing? So after detox, what you should observe now is, is about now the diet yeah. and what you take in your body. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't do, let, some people detox because of basically alcohol, they ruin their system. Yeah. So there's alcohol, there are a lot of drugs which ruin your system. Mm -hmm. So detox help in stabilizing as I've said. Mm -hmm. And so after that you, you should be very keen to what you take. Let's say like diets, you start, as I said you start light. Uh, so you basically do more of natural and organic because you know these days in in Kenya, we have a lot of inorganic foods, like you had this mercury and sugar, That's and true. They something are the like they yeah. are putting things in our meat. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Also in maize, so you find that uh, when you go natural, because actually when you walk in in Nairobi right now, you'll see a lot of fast foods a lot of fast food and that's very unhealthy chips, chips, and many chips. people actually <laughs> let's say if if you're working from eight to five and you don't have time for lunch you just you just order right now there's uber eats and uh, and everything i kind of say fast food is kind of a uh, lazy man food because <laughs> why sh yeah because it's just there it's just up there you just walk a kilometer and you find fries there yeah so i think it's it starts with you yeah like if you want to keep healthy it starts with you like what do you choose to eat 
I think you should go more to the natural side of it. A balanced diet, let's say uh, you should have protein, carbs, and fruit. Especially a fruit. A banana just oh, costs five shillings. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Because I know our audience members also want to keep up. Okay. Protein, carbs, and fruits. Yeah, protein, carbs, and fruits. Okay. Proteins. Yeah, proteins. Can you name maybe one or two? And then carbs, okay. name one or two. So proteins, we have plant proteins and we have animal proteins. So plant proteins, basically things like beans, mm -hmm. lentils, uh, njahe. Yeah, mm -hmm. animal proteins, mm -hmm. things like meat, red meat, there's white meat, yeah, mm -hmm. there's milk. But about protein, uh, we know that we've had rumors that red meat can cause life cell diseases. Even cancer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that is actually true. To digest red meat, the body takes at least four days, three no. to four days, yeah. So it, exactly. So if you take red meat, I think Ngoja you... Kidogo, can uh -huh. I digest that? Okay. <laughs> Let me digest that fact. Okay. Red meat yeah. takes about four days for the body to digest. Exactly. Exactly. So it's very unhealthy for you to take red meat each and every single day. Wow. Exactly. Okay. So if you eat red meat on Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, Thursday, it's still in the, body, still in still the, in the body. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Exactly. Please go on. Yeah, but something like... Uh, beans. Beans takes 30 to 40 minutes to stay in the body. Yeah, so that's protein. Then there's carbs. So carbs, something like rice, there's ugali, there's chapati. Yeah, then from there we have veggies, yeah, spinach, skumawiki. At least we all know that. Yeah, and then water. Water is very important, especially in digestion. Uh, it helps because uh, honestly, uh, a percentage of our body contains a lot of water, right? The yes. plasma and stuff. Yes. So there's no way food will be digested if you don't have water. Of course. And if you, and that's what causes a lot of things like maybe diabetes. Because if if you don't take water, it will strain some of the systems in the body. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Strain some of the systems. Yeah. Body. I also hear that um, water works as a lubricant within our exactly, body. Exactly. Exactly. And so a lot of things need water in order to. True. Um, work properly. Exactly. And you know, there's an interesting thing you said about water. Mm -hmm. And and when we're talking about water, there's something I've heard many times from friends, family, imagine a bowl. There's no True. taste to it. They can't take more than a glass, as in it there's you understand yeah, what I'm trying to you. say? I've even been asked. Mm -hmm. I've been asked because I take two liters of water a day, compulsory, mm -hmm. mandatory. Mm -hmm. It's just a habit. And I've been asked, how can you drink all that water? Like, how is it possible? It tastes like nothing. They say, what do you drink? They say, you know, a chai or soda or something. Um, so what do you say, like, ooh, how important can water be? And is there a substitute for water? And, and how can we make water less boring? <laughs> okay, so I... <laughs> because I know people do yeah. not like the taste. Okay, so it tastes I like think... nothing. There's no substitute of water, definitely. Yes. That's why there's water. Yeah. Get it? So you can substitute water and soda. Soda is very carbonated. It's very unhealthy. And sugary. Definitely, and sugary. Yeah, so I think um, if you want to take a lot of water, I say, you just exercise. Trust me. If you jog a kilometer or two, you'll take a lot of water. So, uh, plus water comes in handy with a balanced diet. So if you eat healthy, your body will want water. You get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you take fast food, chipo, soda, definitely water kwa sour. You will not take water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you take a balanced diet, trust me, you need water. You need yeah. water. Yeah, your body will just need water. Yes. Exactly. And you know, there are these, there are these fours that we get on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you've gotten them. Akuram mm Swajazipata. -hmm. Sometimes we read the first two lines, we're like, oh, in a bowl. But then it has fact. It has facts like um, it, things like if you love your stomach, mm -hmm. don't eat cold food. Um, if you care for your eyes, wear sunglasses. Things like those. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so um, there's also another one that says, you know, if if you care for your stomach as well as your digestion, mm -hmm. drink water at an appropriate time after eating. What's an appropriate time for drinking water after eating? Because I do understand that it is important to drink water at an appropriate time after eating because what happens is if you do eat water, if you eat water, drink. if you eat water, if you eat water, <laughs> it's allowed. <laughs> if you eat water, if you drink water at the wrong time, mm -hmm. what happens is digestion, digestion just doesn't exactly, go well. Exactly. Uh, so basically, if not if you drink water actually, if you drink cold water, 
after eating, you know your system, your system needs a particular temperature an optimum temperature for it for for digestion to take place. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's a must to take water just right after eating, you, you should take warm water. At least it will keep the temperature optimum. So if yeah. you must take water after eating, yeah, just take warm water. water. Yeah. Okay. And if not, just take water 30 minutes after eating. Okay. Exactly. Let's get into the serious stuff now. We've okay. talked about nutrition. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about wellness and lifestyle. Because right now we're trying to talk about preventative measures in order to Control. live a lifestyle that is longer. Yeah. In order to reduce diseases. Once again, I said, the things we're talking about today is not, we can never decide that, you oh, we can't get cancer. What we're trying to do right now is to kind of just give you guys a basis on how you can live a longer and more comfortable life. But nonetheless, you can still get cancer somehow, yeah, some true, way, true, if, it's, if it's in your destiny. I don't know how to put it. But let's say um, when it comes to wellness and lifestyle, uh -huh. what is the difference between wellness and lifestyle, first of all? Because I hear people using the term interchangeably. Uh -huh. They interchange the terms and like, oh, wellness and lifestyle. What is it? So wellness is, it entails a, a lot of things, both mentally, emotionally. Yeah, it's like how you, your body is designed to, to work uh, Let's say, let's get to the mental bit of it. Uh, okay. if, let's say there are some aspects that can make you, I don't know, be. Let's say things like dip, dip, depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can be too much depressed until you you get to a point that it's it has gotten to you. It's mental now. You get it. So wellness is more uh, being stable. Yeah, being stable both emotionally, physically, and mentally mm -hmm. and then all this lifestyle Le lifestyle is I think it's all rounded it's what surrounds us like I can talk about the human body we we are prone to these genetics uh -huh. and there is environment okay. and now there is how we live you get it mm -hmm. of course we, we can't we can't control genetics and mm -hmm. our environment mm -hmm. maybe that's how when they wish ocha like Meru just just mm -hmm. go somewhere where where, where there is good weather and everything yeah but of course you won't work yeah so you'll definitely die yeah but <laughs> but something like uh, you okay. can control how you live okay. that's by how you eat yeah. and yeah exactly basically okay so yeah. we've talked about how you eat mm -hmm. but I'm interested in the, the wellness and lifestyle part because mm -hmm. exercising is something that we're grasping. Yeah. And I've noticed a lot of Kenyans, and I'm so glad about this. Wherever you go nowadays, when I say when I can exercise, wherever you go shopping, whether it's in a shop, even in secondhand places, mm -hmm. you find a lot of exercise clothes true, being spread true. out. So you can see that people finally embracing yeah, it, yeah, a healthy true. lifestyle, exactly. a lifestyle of being able to exercise, a lifestyle of taking care of their bodies, and you know making sure that they're well. Yeah. And when we talk about the importance, can you please give your expertise about the importance of exercise, particularly being active within the uh -huh, body uh -huh. when it comes to preventative measures of diseases? Okay, so being active or, or other physical activities, um, they help the body in, in at least it, it relaxes the body, it reduces stress, definitely. And there's something about exercise and sleep. Exercise really helps sleep. And sleep mm. is really important in disease preventing. Like really? let's say, yeah, in sleep we have we have four stages of sleep. There's stage one, two, three, and the REM sleep. So in stage three and four, that's where the immunity is being restored. Okay, you get it. And to attain stage three and four, you have to get really good sleep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why we are told to have at least six to eight hours of sleep a day. And that's very true because for stage one, two, three, and four, it's a cycle, and you have to go through that cycle three to four times a night. Yeah, so if you sleep, if you are kunawa se wenyona konga, they say I'm an evening person, I'm a morning person. Yeah. I'd actually prefer the morning person because if you wake up at 4 a.m., that's really okay because umela la mapema. But if you wake up, let's say later during the day, you've slept. At a, like let, let's say at midnight or one, that's very unhealthy, because you find the body a deep sleep majorly in Anzanga from 11 to 1 a.m., and that's where the immunity is restored. I love you, do you know the body has it has the cancer cell. We all have cancer cells and the cancer suppressing cells. 
So the cancer cells are, are always inactive, but the suppressing cells are, are active. And that's what keeps us from getting this disease. And so you find that if, if we don't get enough sleep, yeah. we will trigger the cancer cells. Okay. And the cancer suppressing cells will become inactive. And now that's where we are prone to, to get this. And so uh, sleep is very important when it comes to disease ma man management and this can be acquired if you don't have enough let's say if you're going through insomnia exercise will help because mm. definitely you'll be too tired you'll you'll, you'll oh, just have to sleep yeah you'll just have to sleep people who are not able to sleep at all yeah so insomnia comes through uh, um, i think being if you're being glued too much on the telly on our phones these days there's something we call melatonin, which is pro it's a hormone produced in the brain, which tells you what time to sleep. So if and it's normally produced when there's a lot of darkness in the room, and the body has a sleeping pattern. So if you if you if you've established your sleeping pattern, let's say equal one a.m. De definitely, there's no way until eleven. Your body will not produce this hormone, and so I think it's. It's basically our talk on insomnia. It's basically I think they they wanted it for them, them themselves actually. And how to prevent it? You you can now start more by the exercise bit mm. and at least change your sleeping pattern. Yes. Just try at least by eleven if it's latest. Just be in bed. Of yeah. Course. And at least that way. And you know, when we're talking about lifestyles of um, people not being able to sleep, uh -huh. um, I, I can't talk about the lifestyle of the people who passed away because that would be quite disrespectful. Uh -huh. But how to maybe, when it comes to sleep, uh -huh. and very people who are very busy, uh -huh. let me put it that way, people who are prominent and busy, and they don't have time for enough sleep, or they don't have time for exercise or things like that. And you know, um, you know, certain times you hear they get heart attacks or they get strokes or there's that cancer that true, comes true. along. Um, I don't know. And I've actually come across people that say that more than four hours of sleep mm -hmm. makes you a lazy person. Can you please debunk that myth? That myth? Okay, I can say you don't have time to sleep or exercise because we were, okay, the human body, it has to sleep, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As like it's something, it's like eating. With the you can stay without food, definitely. The body will not work well without sleep. Yeah, so you just have to sleep. The four hours beat. Um, and this is coming from people who've read from Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, people who reportedly yeah, know, used know, to sleep for about four or five hours only. And so people are following that trend. How dangerous is that trend? It's very dangerous because it can cause a lot of lifestyle diseases. Because, mm. as I said, sleep helps the immunity. So such people are prone to, they have very low immunity, and they are prone to a lot of diseases. Uh -huh. And then okay. I also want to, you said something about uh, they don't have time for exercise. Yeah, yeah. You can't miss, let's say, 20 minutes of, of your time. Let's say you're in the office, mm. of course, definitely. Uh, let's say you're working in the fourth floor, kuna staircase, definitely. You, you can just take, let's say, 10 minutes of, of your time, you just at least jog through them, that's exercise. It helps, it helps with, uh, with the, the, let's say, the heart rate, in a panisha heart rate, and that's what uh, reduces cholesterol in the body okay. when your heart rate is very high yes yes and it can be attained by skipping the the, the skipping rope this jogging right. exactly right so i i don't think you can miss let's say 30 minutes of, of time to exercise a day and 30 minutes is enough right it's very enough if it's more it than enough exactly yeah. exactly so 30 minutes a day is yeah. sufficient enough to keep you healthy yes, for a exactly. lifetime exactly so you guys 30 minutes of activeness or 30 minutes of exercise a day is sufficient to keep you healthy for a lifetime keep that in mind if you're interested in trying something out, 30 minutes is not that much. I think it's just as long as one of those episodes that uh, we sit and watch, so sacrifice that. Exactly. Yeah. So moving right along, mm -hmm. when it comes to um, things, especially for the youth, uh -huh. right now, Tunangalia, like you said, junk food, you uh -huh. mentioned that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 
a lot of our youth, you know, yes, they say, ah, oh, you don't may get my exercise from walking to uni and from uni, to uni and from uni, and that's true, that's exercise. When it comes to food, they do, they do tend to jump into the junk food a lot because mm -hmm. also that's what's served into their cafeterias and everything. But as young people, what are some of the things they can avoid apart from junk food? Uh -huh. What else can people stay away from to keep themselves healthy for a lifetime or to stay lo or to live a longer life? Okay, so <clears throat> definitely there's something like alcohol. A lot of people are prone to alcohol. And I'm not saying alcohol is bad, but too, mu too much of something is very bad. Alcohol causes a lot of types of cancer, like there's, there's the liver cancer, there's the mouth. I think it's trachea. Brain. Yeah, it yeah. causes a lot of... And so alcohol, uh, if you have to take alcohol, just keep it to the minimum because later on it will affect you. Yeah, then there's something like cigarettes, this tobacco thing, it, it's, it's very harmful, definitely. Because, yeah, yes, you might be exercising, but again, you just do alcohol and I, I don't think it will help much. Mm. So like, that's why I say exercise is a discipline. When you, when you start exercise, you have to live healthy too, mm. get it? Because mm. your body needs, needs as much energy from mm. a, a, at least to enable you to, to carry out those physical activities. Yeah, so yeah. there's no way you'll eat junk and then you won't be able to exercise, definitely. Mm. Yeah, you'll just be wasting your time. All right, exactly. so then stay away from the junk, the cigarettes, the alcohol. Yes. Anything else? Mm, basically, drugs and substance abuse. Okay. Yeah. I have yeah, Exactly. All right, and these are some of the things that our youth are really getting into nowadays, so that was perfectly good advice that you gave right there. Yes. And going back to diseases like cancer, I know that you're not an expert on cancer. Mm -hmm. Next week, we're going to be bringing someone who knows a little bit more about cancer. What we wanted to do, first of all, was to show a little bit of preventative measures before we actually bring someone who knows a bit more about the cancer. Mm -hmm. And so, for right now, I'd like to just ask, you know, when it comes to things like diseases mm -hmm. and curing them, through nutrition and wellness, what would you say is 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 a probability of that? Because me, mm -hmm. I haven't watched YouTube videos online mm -hmm. that someone cured themselves of cancer by drinking carrot juice every day. What's the probability of such things? So we are talking of a person who already has cancer, right? Yes, and can food really, really be used to reverse something that serious uh, okay. once it gets there? Because me and Gautun are watching, I'm like, okay, so you ate carrots every day and you cured cancer, really? So I'd say if you have it, you'll just have to, to try and live very healthy, very healthy, not just healthy. Because <laughs> let's say like, like something like food, you shouldn't take, if you have cancer, you should, your, your immunity is very low. And we know if, if you cook food and let it get cold, there are a lot of bacteria which have, especially rice. By the way, you guys, don't eat cold food. Can I just stop yeah, you there? It's okay. Stop eating cold food. Never eat cold food. It's not good for you. Yeah, please go on. So something like rice, you should take it when it's hot or warm. Yeah, exactly, because there's bacteria that, that builds up. And then again, if you have cancer, try to stay not in crowded places. Try to isolate yourself in somewhere at least where, because again, your immunity is very low. So, a, a small bacteria can can put you down. Right. Yeah. So I'd say you just try to to avoid crowded places, isolate yourself from crowded places, and then again, eat warm food and healthy food. Try to minimize the co cholesterol in it. By, you know, many people confuse calories and fats. Mm -hmm. Like if you take an instant of, let's say when you let's say work by food and then you check the in, in ingredients and stuff, so you see calories, 300 calories, and then you're like, what? These, these are a lot. So calories are just the energy. Okay. What you should be concerned about is the fats. Which yeah. co okay. Fats. I'm glad you brought this up because up. Exactly. me, I'm not those ones. Me, I don't buy things okay. and look at calories and kuna fats. Kuna I just kuna throw kuna them into sana. the basket. <laughs> exactly. Yes, so please, can you give the differences um, in between that? Because I know the people who are paranoid. Yeah, true, true, yeah. true. Especially if you want to lose weight, yeah. you definitely check the calories and the fats. So calories are basically the energy 
that food is giving. So what matters is, if you want to lose weight, is the, the content of fat. Okay. And there's always a bunch written, the proteins, fat, and everything. So yes. you should be concerned more on the fat rather than the KCL. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. So the fats should concern you more than exactly, the calories. Exactly. And what's exactly. the, the cholesterol and calories are two different so things, right? So no, yeah, Col cholesterol is more of the fat in the body now. Okay, yeah, so cholesterol definitely. and fat are more exactly, similar. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. so and actually, I'm glad that you brought up cholesterol because cholesterol is one of the things that gets people heart attacks and strokes. I know. Yeah, exactly. And I've come across somebody that's not been able to put down their cholesterol, no matter mm -hmm. what they've done. They've done their exercises. They're trying to eat healthy. Um, it seems like sometimes cholesterol for some people goes away. Some people it just doesn't go away. Uh, I can say what do it, you know about it, it depends with the type of exercise you you're doing. If okay. if let's say especially cholesterol is found in those guys who have pressure. So if you have pressure, there's no way I'm going to the gym and do bodybuilding. <laughs> exactly. So uh, you'll, you'll basically do more of cardio, because cholesterol, if you do much of that, it will, there's something about the heart rate again. So if, you're, if your heart rate is fast, uh, the cholesterol that is built in the arteries and the heart will definitely reduce mm -hmm. and then there's there's food to reduce the cholesterol and something like avocado avocado has hdl hdl is a very good cholesterol in the body and the body produces hdl and this bad cholesterol we consume is known as ldl which is very harmful so if you take avocado it will it will automatically try and replace the ldl which is the bad cholesterol and so avocado is is a food we can take and eggs, eggs also has HDL, the good cholesterol. And so okay. as much as we are eating, we should, there are some foods which are very good. Yeah, right. avocado, eggs, yeah. We should try and- And those are healthy fats. That. Yeah, they're good healthy fats. fats. Especially the yolk in the egg. They're very healthy fats. Okay, and so And it has a lot of nutrients. I hear also peanuts. Peanuts uh, is more of, it's more of protein mm -hmm. and energy. Okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. Mm. All right, we do have to wind up our topic. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our viewers concerning um, preventative measures when it comes to wellness and nutrition? Can we just ensure? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, basically uh, it's about just living healthy, uh, keeping your life healthy and simple by sleep, eating, eating well, and at least one or two physical activities during the day and it will it will keep you well and water don't forget water water is very healthy yeah so basically mm. yeah okay and if there are people who would like for you and by the way mm -hmm. we're talking before and mm -hmm. um i i actually wish i had done this mm -hmm. i mentioned to him quickly that that um i'm not going to ask him to come up with a menu for nutrition because it might be difficult and he said that's actually very easy and so actually Caleb is able, if you're interested in either adding or gaining, is yeah. it? Either adding or gaining, please can you say that um, maybe to our viewers? Yeah, so uh, I, I have a company known as Afrofits uh, in, in, so, in social media, in Instagram, it's Caleb underscore Afrofits. And so if, if you want a diet plan, either to gain weight, which mm -hmm. is lean mass, or to lose weight, you just, you can contact contact me through that handle and we'll be able to get you there okay and so you guys have heard that uh he has told you the, the handle which you can reach him has told you where you can find him please do that if you're interested in losing or gaining or if you're interested in having a more healthy lifestyle or living longer caleb here will write you down a menu i'm talking breakfast lunch snack and supper monday to friday They'll write you down a menu and help you out with your nutrition and walk with you on your journey. Thank you so much for tuning in to Help on Monday. My name is Jemma Chachi. This has been Why in the Morning. Again, keep talking to us. It's hashtag Why in the Morning and hashtag Help on Monday at the Y254 channel at Joy underscore Mochache on certain platforms. Once again, my name is Jemma Chachi. This has been our guest, Caleb Mugiri. Coming up next is Youth and Politics with Karanja Alex. Do not go anywhere. <laughs>